When you are trying to impress people with words, the more you say, the more common you appear and the less in control. Even if you are saying something banal, it it will seem original if you make it vague, open-ended and swinish-like. Powerful people impress and intimidate by saying less. The more you say and more likely you are to. Now let's read out a story. And this is going to change your life. Listen to this story. Gaius Marcus, also known as Coriolanus, was a great military hero of ancient Rome. In the first half of the 5th century BC, he won many imp- important battles, saving the city from calamity time and time again. Because he spent most of his time on the battlefield, few Romans knew him personally, making him something of a legendary figure. In 454 BC, Coriolanus decided it was time to exploit his reputation and enter politics. He stood for election to the high rank of council. Candidates for this position traditionally made a public address early in the race. And when Coriolanus came before the people, he began to display dozens of scars he had accumulated over 17 years of fighting for the Rome. Few in crowd really heard the lengthy speech that followed those scars, proof of his valor and patriotism moved the people's tears, Coriolanus election seemed certain. When the polling day arrived, however, Coriolanus made an entry into the forum, escorted by the entire senate and by the city patricians, the aristocracy. The common people who saw this were disturbed by such a blustering show of confidence on election day. And then Coriolanus spoke again, mostly addressing the wealthy citizens who had accompanied him. His words were arrogant and insolent, claiming certain victory in the vote. He boasted of his battlefield exploit, made short jokes that appealed only to the patricians, voiced angry accusations against his opposition and speculated on the riches he would bring to Rome. This time the people listened. They had not realized that this legendary soldier was also a common braggart. News of Coriolanus' second speech speak, spread quickly through Rome and the people turned out in great number to make sure he was not elected. Defeated, Coriolanus returned to the battlefield, bitter and vowing re- revenge on the common folk who had voted against him. Some weeks later, a large shipment of gain arrived in Rome. The Senate was ready to disturb, distribute this food to the people for free, but just as they were preparing to vote on the question of Coriolanus appear on that scene and took the Senate for. The distribution, he argued, would have a harmful effect on the city as a whole. Several senators appeared, won over, and vote on their distribution fell into doubt. Coriolanus did not stop here. He went on to condemn the concept of democracy itself. He advocated getting rid of the people's representation, the tribunes, and turning over the government of city to the partitions. patricians. When words of Coriolanus' latest speech reached the people, their anger knew no bounds. The tribunes were sent to the Senate to demand that Coriolanus appear before them. A refused riots broke out all over the city. The Senate, fearing the people's wrath, finally voted in favor of the gain, great distribution. The tribunes were appeared, but the people will still demand that Coriolanus speak to them and apologize. If he repented and agreed to keep his opinion to himself, he would be allowed to return to the battlefield. Coriolanus did appear one last time before the people who listened to him in rapt silence. He started slowly and softly, but as the speech went, he became more and more blunt. Yet again, he blurred insults. His tone was arrogant, his expressions disdainful. The more he spoke, the angrier the people became. Finally, they shouted him down and silenced him. The tribunes conferred, condemned Coriolanus to death and ordered the magistrate to take him at once to the top of the Tarpian rock and throw him over. The delighted crowd second the decision. The patricians, however, managed to intervene and the sentence was commuted to the lifetime banishment. 
When the people found out that Rome great military hero would never return to the city, they celebrated in the streets. In fact, no one had ever seen such a celebration, not even after the defeat of a foreign enemy. Interpretation Before this entrance, before his entrance into politics, the name of Coriolanus evoked Ah, his battlefield accomplishment showed him a man of great bravery. Science and since the citizens knew little about him, all kinds of legends became attached to his name. The moment he appeared before the Roman citizens, however, he spoke his mind. All that grandeur and mystery vanished. The bragged and blustered like a common soldier, he insulted and slandered people and if he felt threatened and insecure suddenly he not at all what the people had imagined discrepancy between uh, the legend and the reality proved immensely disappointing to those who wanted to be believe in their hero the more coriolanus said the less powerful he appeared a person who cannot control his word shows that he cannot control himself is uh, unworthy of respect had Coriolanus said less, the people would never have had cause to be offended by him, would never have known his true feelings, he would have maintained his powerful aura, would certainly have been elected council and would have been able to accomplish his anti-democratic goals. But the human tongue is a beast and few can master. It strains constantly to the break out of its cage, and if it is not tamed, it will it will run wild and cause you grief. Power cannot occur to those who squander their treasure of words. Power cannot occur to those who squander their treasure of words.